Hey guys, it's John P. We're here at my house where I'm about to show you the most exciting wireless product in the history of mankind. It's Open Mesh. Today's episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Lumosity. All right, I might have sounded a little overly enthusiastic. However, not much. I'm going to show you this system from a company called Open Mesh that I have installed throughout my home and has solved one of the biggest problems I've ever had. And it's been lingering for years, which is we got a big house. We have all kinds of areas in the house that are not covered by Wi-Fi or where it's really weak. And I don't like that. This has solved it all. Get your checkbooks ready. I wish I was on one of those uh, home shopping networks, Dave, because yeah. I sell a lot of these things no, right you'd now. Be, you'd be perfect. Okay. Anyway, what we're talking about, what we're looking at is a system that involves several of these little wireless access points. All this is going to do, this is not a router. It doesn't replace your router in your house, but what it's going to do is give you a network based on these things, and you're going to use maybe three or more of these, and what they're going to do is overlap their wireless coverage and give you one single wireless network throughout your entire area. You can roam around. You don't have to connect to other access points, worry about other SSIDs or anything like that. So that's the gist of it. Now let's talk about the details, how it works. I'm going to show you in a minute uh, some different variations on the theme, but what you're looking at right now is my network closet in my house. I got a lot of junk in here. Some of it's being tested, some of it's permanent. But right down here, what I have is I have this 24 port switch. Now this switch serves as kind of the backbone for the home network. Everything comes into here. Now these little devices will use what's called PoE, power over ethernet. So that means it will either allow you to plug in a power port and then plug it into a you know 110 outlet, or you can skip that and only use an ethernet cable. However, in order to only use an ethernet cable, you have to be able to put power into the ethernet cable. Now, there are two types of power that go on power over ethernet. There's passive and there's active. And there are some standards and then some people don't use standards. This one is not really standards based. So you can't just go buy a switch that has power over ethernet and plug it into these. That does not work. They even warn you about it when you take them out of the box. What you need to do is get a PoE injector and Open Mesh happens to sell them. You'll notice here that I've got a really cool one. This is a rack mountable unit. It's 12 ports. And what you'll see is I have coming out of my network switch four different Ethernet cables that go into the first four ports on this injector. And you can see it's labeled data. So that means it's coming in from the switch. Now this one says power plus data. That means, okay, what's coming here goes out and we have taken the data, we've combined it with power and we're sending it out a cable. Now, my, my install is not complete, so it's a little messy. You see there's two wires right here that are coming out from power and they are going up to this little jack panel that I have and I've run out of jacks because I have too much ethernet. So I'm going to add another one of these somewhere in here and I'll run these later. Now what happens is these cables go up into the attic and they are carrying power for this to other access points in the house and we're going to get to those. I also have one of them, the white one here, going right up onto this shelf. And all I have to do is plug this into the 12 volt power over ethernet port. And look, it turns on. There's no, we did not plug in a power cable because the power is being, is coming from the injector, the PoE injector. That's why it's called an injector. It's injecting power into it. So you'll notice that is powering right up. Now, in this case, I can lay it right here on the shelf 
and it's all good. That will boot up and it will create a Wi-Fi access point that easily covers the room we're in plus the adjacent rooms. It's, it's got much better range than you would expect it to. Now, that works well when I have it just sitting on a shelf or sitting somewhere. It doesn't need a case of any kind. But let's go in the kitchen and I'm going to show you some mounting options to get us started. Okay, first of all, I just realized I forgot to tell you one important detail. How much do these things cost? Well, I didn't really forget. I wanted to wait till we get to this part because it depends. This is the only tricky thing about the open mesh system. You need to buy several parts and you kind of have to figure out in advance which parts you're going to need because they don't sell them as a kind of kit because every installation is different. So this little part, the wireless access point, there's kind of two different versions that you might want and check the website because I've got all the links to the exact things you need. This is the long range indoor kind of system and I'll show you the out one, outdoor one later. But there's basically two, there's one for indoors, one for outdoors. Now, when you have this sitting on a shelf like we had in the other room, it doesn't need any kind of case, but sometimes you don't have a shelf to put it on it or you wanna hide it, you wanna make it look professional. So then we have a range of different options. First of all, this is kind of the simplest one. Um, this is, it, it's so, these are so easy, I can't believe it. It's a two pieces and what happens is the, the open mesh access point fits inside of this. You see there's two bumps here and there's two little holes here and we just kind of stick it right there over that. Okay. Now this is one of the power adapters. Oops, I got this the wrong way because we got to, let's see, put these right here. Now this is a power adapter. It's going to feed through that, the plug feeds through that opening and this will plug in here so we have power. Now one of the things about the open mesh system is you don't have to actually have every one of these plugged into Ethernet. What they will do is they will become repeaters if you don't have an Ethernet cable in it. Now there's a reason you'd probably want to if you can, but we'll get to that in a minute. So what happens is we just take the, uh, this little lid and we snap it on this bad boy. And you notice now we've got these, oh, I didn't get quite get in there, but anyway, you notice we got the plug sitting out. Now here's what happens. We take this and it's gonna plug right in to one of, to one of your normal outlets. And um, if you don't have the designer kind like we have, you use this screw, it would screw into the middle and hold this in place over that hole. And if you do have a designer one, then you use this screw to hold it in place here. So you still have a power uh, outlet available while this system is using this power outlet. Very ingenious, can be put anywhere in your house, as many of these things as you want. It doesn't require ethernet. Now, let's say you happen to have ethernet somewhere. Well, then you could go with a different kind of case. This one is unusual, I like it. It has little holes on the front which line up with the lights here. So we would put this inside of here and line up those lights. And now it comes with a couple of different cables that we can plug in to these two ethernet ports here. And these cables will go to these little, mm, these are kind of hard to snap out sometimes, but it will go into these openings. And guess what? You mount this on a wall with this backing plate and you have two ethernet ports on the front for just like normal ethernet switch ports, okay? So that's a couple of ways to do it. Now, let's talk about the power one more time. I showed you this little power adapter that went inside of this wall plate, but there is a thicker power adapter as well. So you have to decide which of the two do you want. Frankly, I'd always buy this one. I don't know why you'd want this one, but I don't know. Maybe sometimes you'd want a thick one or maybe it's cheaper. I don't think it is, but I'd go with this one. The uh, other thing that you could do is instead of using that big 12 port adapter 
uh, because maybe you only want two or three of these and you don't want to spend like 100, 150 bucks, whatever that uh, rack mount unit is, you can get these little power over ethernet adapters. Now for these, you're gonna need the big one of these because it puts out more power. This plugs in right here and you'll notice on one side it says LAN. That's coming in from the network with no power and over here, power over ethernet. That's going out to this and it has power. So if you don't have a big rack in a closet, you can just use these and then run the ethernet through the ceiling to get to these and use any of these mounting points and bingo bango. So you'll see there's like three of them right here. That would be enough to power up three of these access points. So I want to show you how I mounted some of the other access points, especially using the power over ethernet feature, which I think is awesome and life changing. But before we do, let's take just a minute to talk about Lumosity. Let's take a break from all this wireless madness because I want to show you guys how easy it is to get started training your cranium and making yourself smarter and getting better memory and things like that with Lumosity.com. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started. First of all, I signed up for an account. It's free. No big whoop. Then when you log in, it's going to step you through and show you, hey, we've got personalized training programs that help you with brain training games and you get an index that shows how smart you are and stuff like that. So they're going to work on giving you targets and a customized training program and then they're going to help measure it to show you how you're done. So click next. Now we're done. So right here, let's begin with your first training session. I'm just going to start training and it's loading up a game. Oh great, Dave. Speed match. I'm horrible at these things. <laughs> Did you know the majority of the population is deficient in omega-3 fatty acids? Eat more fish. Okay, here we go. We're going to play the speed match game. Would you like to learn how to play? Nah. To play the tutorial, tutorial click that button later. Oh, okay, great. Three, two, one. Does the current card match the one before? No. Does the current card match? No. Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. No. Yes. 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 No. No. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. So that's it. It's a game and this is actually really addictive. I mean, I could sit here and play this for hours and I'd be getting smarter when I do. So you guys just head on over to lumosity.com forward slash geekbeat. Give it a try. Let me know how you do when you play the match game. Okay, we're in the living room. This is kind of our media center. I've got this big old sharp TV and we've got our KEF speaker system and our Onkyo receiver and an APC UPC unit and all this good stuff. So guess what? Since I have all these components, it was a perfect place to hide a little wireless access point in plain sight. Look right here. That's it. That is my Wi-Fi access point. Now what I've done is I have not used the power over ethernet. If you can kind of get down in here, Dave, and look, you'll see that I actually have this plugged in to a power uh, cable so, because I have power here, so why not? And there are two ethernet jacks coming here. Now, one of those ethernet uh, cables is going back to my router in the other room, to the switch, because I already had an ethernet jack here, so I used it. The other one is passing through to my Sono system. So you might as well take advantage of that extra ethernet port if you've got it. So that's an example of one that we didn't use power over ethernet and we didn't mount it in a box either. But let's go take a look at my closet because yes, I put an access point in the closet. Welcome to my closet. It's pretty big. I know it's kind of that's what she said. Anyway, <laughs> we are in my closet and this is attached to our bedroom. It's big. It's in the furthest wing of our house. I did not want an access point in the bedroom. I just didn't. I wanted it hidden. So what did I do? Well, take a look right up here. This is one of our access points 
and it's just in a round enclosure. You remember the little square and rectangular enclosures I just showed you? Well, this one works just like that. It's a two-piece system. It's got a base plate. You set the little um, open mesh access point in it. You snap the lid on it. You mount it up there. You're done. And this one is powered by power over ethernet. It's a single cable that goes up into the ceiling all the way through the house and back to that power over ethernet injector. Let's go take a look at how we did it in the exercise room. Okay, welcome to the gymnasium. This is where all the exercise happens with the help of the machines. And we have a TV and a sound, uh, a sound bar mounted on the wall because it gets loud in here. Well, guess what? This is a perfect place to hide one of these little access points because I love the fact that they're so tiny. So this is not fully installed yet, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use these two little hanger kind of hook things. I'll put two screws on the wall flat behind the TV and I'll put this on there and snap them in and it'll be done. I've got an ethernet cable here because we already had ethernet behind the TV and I've got power because we had power behind the TV. So this is giving us uh, internet access throughout this part of the house. And one of the other benefits of having them near the TVs like, like we do is if you have something like an Apple TV, a Roku, etc., you can hop on the Wi-Fi network for that connectivity or you can use that second ethernet port. Okay, we got one more access point that takes care of the garage and the backyard. Let's go look at that because it's totally different. So one of the design requirements that we had was we needed Wi-Fi coverage out here. We have this marvelous patio. We like to sit out here under the ceiling fans, listen to the Sonos, and we like to come over here and hop in the pool, which we have a cover on at the moment. But the point is, when I get in the pool, I don't want to give up my gadgets. I want to sit out here with my laptop or my iPad or whatever. So we needed coverage out here. And it doesn't quite get it from all those indoor access points. Now we do have an overhang outside and you'll see we've got like a little bug zapper up here. I could have mounted a wireless access point under the overhang, however, our garage happens to be just on the other side of this wall, and I figured why expose an outdoor access point to the elements if we can put it in here. So this is the garage, that is the access point, that little bitty thing up there. I wanna show you how that thing was installed just because I think it's awesome how simple it is. So there is a little mounting plate that gets screwed to the ceiling and it just has two kind of hooks on it. One of them right here for the front and one right here. So this is the access point box. It kind of snaps together and you'll notice that that looks just like one of those indoor access points with an exception. It has a little antenna that sticks out of it. Now, the, you might think, well, I want an antenna on all of mine. Well, the antenna on this one gives you better range. However, the other one is more optimized for speed. So you're better off using more of the other ones overlapping and using this one just for outdoor. You put that together, you snap this thing in here like that, and you are done. So the one last thing that we need to talk about is how the system is designed. And let's talk a little bit about how much it costs to do what we just did here. Come on, let's take a look. Okay, so this is a very crude map of a representation of our house's floor plan, okay? What we've got is kind of a U-shaped home with a garage over here. The pool is kind of out in the back over here. So what I was looking to do was get as much coverage throughout the entire area as possible. So the access points are kind of laid out in this fashion. And what happens is these things give coverage generally in a particular area which Wi-Fi, as you probably know, the farther out you go, the slower the speeds get. So let's say in this access point, right in, in this area is probably gonna be pretty optimal, but once you start getting out to the fringes, even if it reaches here, you may only get, you may get 50 meg of throughput here and one and a half here. 
So we've got that one going there. We've got another one right here. And you'll notice they begin to overlap. Okay, this one is going to overlap with this one. And that's what you're looking to do when you create a mesh network is you want them to all overlap. This one's going to cover the yard here. This one's going to cover. So these all reach into the patio area. Let's say that's my table out there somewhere. And they're going to, these two right here are going to overlap across the pool this way. So we basically blanket the whole thing. Now, one important thing to note. As we talked about, every one of my access points is connected with Ethernet. I did that for a reason. Okay, so here we've got a switch, and let's say it's got four ports on it for grins. And let's draw some access points which we're going to connect to that switch. Okay, when we take an Ethernet cable and we connect it to this particular access point, let's pretend that we get 30 megabits of bandwidth through that connection. And let's say we go over here to this access point and this one is also going to get 30 meg. Now, these two access points might have already had Ethernet connectivity to them, so they're going to get the full bandwidth. But let's say these two access points are kind of far away. Well, what's going to happen is when this one turns on and it's got its little Wi-Fi mesh network going all out, when we turn this one on, it can reach into this Wi-Fi mesh and it will kind of grab a virtual connection. Now, when that happens, this is not using Ethernet. It is still an access point and we can have a little laptop over here and that laptop can connect wirelessly to this, but it's only going to get 15 meg. That's because this is considered one hop. It's a single connection to the switch and this is two hops. So this one cuts the speed in half. If this, connect, if this access point could only reach this one, and this one was radiating out here, and this one was radiating, this is the third hop. That's going to cut the speed of this one to 7.5. So you see why I chose to run Ethernet to all of mine. I wanted to make sure we had full speed to every single point. And that's what you're going to have to do. You have to climb up in the attic if you want it. Now, let's go back to the pricing because that's the big key, right? What did all of this cost? Well, in our case, each of the access points, and we have five of them, they were about $85 each. So we'll have five times 85 bucks for that's for the access points. Now, these little enclosures, pretty much any of the enclosures you want, they're like $19 a piece. Now, in our case, we used one, two. I only used two enclosures. So two enclosures times $19. Now, then we have to worry about the power over Ethernet. So that's these little things. I can't, I can't remember exactly the cost, but let's say these are about $15. Um, and we need the plugs as well. So all together... Uh, that might be, let's pretend, $25, okay? So we had one, two, three of them that used power. Now let's just call it 25 bucks a piece. And then we also used that big power over Ethernet switch in there, which I don't know, let's say it was 149 even though I think it's a little less. I think it's maybe 99 or somewhere in that range. Now when we add it all up, we're probably, for this house, for this installation, we're probably looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of, let's say, $700. What could you do it for? Well, you could get three of the access points and three of the little power cables, and they're going to be about roughly $300, and that's all you really need. If you want to go overboard and if you want to get all the enclosures and get a power over Ethernet switch, you see how the math works. So that's how you're going to go about designing your open mesh system. I will tell you the performance of the network in this house now is awesome. I have never had anything like it except in commercial environments. You just can't beat that for the price. For that reason, this system gets an GeekBeat Editor's Choice Award and I recommend it to you as highly as I've ever recommended any product ever. 
Okay guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the network or anything else, leave them in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and stay tuned, youtube.com forward slash geekbeatv. I'll see you later.